In the mountaintops, we find the secret of the freshwater-dependent ecosystems. Even though Europe has suffered a 20% decrease in snowfalls in the past 50 years, the melted water of the Extremadura mountains ensures the periodic increase of the hydrographic basins of the Tagus and Guadiana rivers. The water flows along the very old quaternary glacier valleys, forming amazing river basins and waterfalls, some of them with spectacular falls as high as 30 meters. The crystal clear streams flow between a tangle of alder, ash and willow trees dampening on its way the dense gallery forests. This land is one of the most diverse inland regions of Europe. It has the greatest river banks and is among the first in number of lakes and gorges. It has more than 1500 kilometers of inland coast and it adds up to 48 reservoirs. It has a water universe of 23,000 hectares that makes up a permanent food pantry for countless animals. It is obvious that here, wildlife preservation and dynamism are always guaranteed. As on land, there are moving battles also taking place underwater. Also, here life is always at stake. One of the most exotic inhabitants is the caddis worm. It is the larva of an insect called Trichoptera that moves around protected by a burden of leaves and small stones to avoid being dragged by the currents. The larva of the stonefly and the mayfly also glide along the aquatic bottom. Two good pollution indicators since they cannot withstand the impurities of the waters. Nobody is safer when the water beetle brings its two small hairs to get oxygen from the surface. It is the horrific larva of the diving beetle, a vicious predator only six centimeters big that sows panic underwater. The agitation clouds the bottom. We can only guess the massacre taking place. First, it is a worm, and then a tadpole. Little by little, all die, strangled by this cruel monster. With such an unsafe site, the metamorphosis of the stonefly occurs just in time. It will be able to escape from its dangerous neighbor. The stonefly climbs lazily through a reed to get out of the water and slowly detaches itself from its shell. Once the process is completed, it will spend at least three hours of its life in the air competing with thousands of males to inseminate females. The rivers are responsible to a large extent for the maintenance of life because they continuously renew the food reserves. The common blackbird, the guard of the muddy riverbanks, will have plenty of opportunities to stuff itself with earthworms. The white-throated dipper, more intrepid than the blackbird, practices diving courageously to fish insects. Its dives are brief, but it can stay submerged for 30 seconds 
withstanding a thrust of 4,500 litres per minute. While walking, it bends the body on the legs, a gesture also made by the chicks when they are hungry and wait for their mother. The marbled newt goes deep into the vegetation and only comes out on very few occasions. Its long, flat tail, equal or even larger than the head and body together, is the body feature that differentiates it from frogs and toads, the other amphibians that do not have tail. While hunting, it creates small currents with its mouth to absorb the preys that are closer by. It is a trick that gives good results with the stonefly. The Spanish ribbed newt does not flee like this Bosca's newt. It is the second largest amphibian in Europe and it is a strange defense mechanism. It shrinks its abdomen and its ribs go through the skin, becoming poisonous thorns. The young and defenseless Iberian frog is more vulnerable. It needs to be quick with the hesitant pill bug before some perverse bird notices it and becomes the prey itself. If it wants to live to be 10 years old, the age that the small Mediterranean tree frog can reach, it should blend with the reeds and jump only if it's in danger. Its cry attracts snakes and nocturnal raptors. The tadpole shrimp are completely different to anything that moves in fresh water. The most striking feature of these prehistoric crustaceans is the shield that protects their backs and also that they may eat each other. They are cannibals. The red swamp crayfish is an agitator, a potential criminal, since it is responsible for the death of the native crawfish in the European rivers. When it needs air, it rises to the surface and pulls out half of its shell to get oxygen into the gills. But now this threatening attitude has nothing to do with breathing. It is due to the presence of the American mink. Even snapping its pincers, the mammal will pull it off from the water and it will end up destroying it as if it was paper. The trout, from the same family as the salmon, needs cold and very clean rivers. Its strong fins assist in the brisk movements and abrupt turns. When the young fish are born, they will remain in the small rivers where they came to exist, and when they grow up, they will migrate to deeper waters. There is a great difference in size between the trout and the Spanish minnow, which is only 10 centimeters long. Like the spined loach, they are species of special interest because they are endangered. The Iberian barbel is hardier, but they are all females, so to reproduce, they need the sperm of a different fish, the Iberian chub. The eel also has a difficult time because the river dams prevent the young eels, the famous elva, from flowing freely.
the hefty black bass can afford to be still. It does not move. It is like a statue. But its immobility is deceptive. In a thousandth of a second, it can become an unstoppable rascal that will go after, for instance, the three-spined stickleback, a small fish that instead of scales has a thin bone sheet on each side. It will also go after the freshwater blenny, whose fins look like legs, used as support to walk on the bottom of the rivers. The black bass will also chase after the barbel, very abundant in the mid-course of the rivers. All of them are sentenced to die before the otter, an underwater torpedo that will make their lives miserable. The devastating mouth is crucial to the otter since it's 100% carnivore. As a general rule, it hunts sick or handicapped specimens, thus allowing the survival of the fittest. The fact that otters and minks can swim is a serious disadvantage to the fish. The fox, on the other hand, is a land explorer and will travel long distances to obtain an aquatic trophy. Fish are also hit hard by some birds. The kingfisher does not miss a hit. Its attacks last a quarter of a second. It goes back and forth without a stop. Its hits are endless and it is a highly ambitious looter. <laughs> 